What's going on guys, Wilt from Ruby Nation here, and today we have Admin Cinder. Hey guys. Scarlet. Heyo. Nora. Boop. And Pyrrha. Hello again. And today we are talking about Volume 4, Chapter 5, Menagerie. Uh, this is a Blake-centric episode, and I'm going to get everyone's sort of starting off points about the episode and what they thought of it. And I'm going to start with Pyrrha on this one. Oh God, um, <laughs> I I definitely came prepared with notes for class. Um, I just I kind of liked that it was a bit more Blake centric, and that we didn't see Ruby and the rest of the team because it made it feel like they cared more about you know the other characters outside of Ruby, who is the centric character of Team RWBY, and it was kind of nice just to take a break from that. <laughs> And what we about get to you, learn Nora? about her parents. Oh, yeah. The parents, big deal. Nora? Well, <laughs> when I watched the episode, I was, I'm like, I was really hyped about it. Because, like, when I first saw the members of the white thing, I was like, mm, why do they look familiar? And I paused it, and I was, like, looking at them for, like, probably, like, five minutes, not gonna lie. And then it hit me that they were the ones from the intro. That little bean. Like, uh. I, I don't know why it took me so long, but like I freaked out and I was like, "Oh my god!" And like Anyways. I was freaking out because I, it took me so long to realize that they were the ones from the intro and that they're not as innocent as they seem. And when they walked away on the stairs, I wanted to jump into my laptop and punch them in the face. <laughs> you would. Yeah. I would I break their legs? Sounds like Nora, <laughs> Scarlet. Um, going as to what Nora was just saying, I kind of already knew that they were the ones from the intro, so I was kind of already expecting them to be the get bad guys from the get-go, mm -hmm. but I am very interested to see how the white fang is gonna develop from this point, because they did mention, um, episode one that Hazel is gonna go see the leader of the white fang, which is not... Adam Torres. Mm -hmm. It's Sienna Khan. For sure. And uh, Cinder? I mean, I like the episode overall with. Um, I mean, I like seeing all the different types of funness. They were pretty cool. And then, well, hearing about all the family and stuff. I, I really. I don't really, I think I have a theory about uh, her dad, but I'll leave it up for a bit later on. Alright. Well, starting off the episode, we open up with Blake and Son getting off of the boat, and they're coming off the boat, and basically we, I don't know how much of a time skip that that happened, or if one happened very much at all, but they are now in Menagerie, they are getting off of the boat, and we see a lot of different type of faunas, and I'm just curious... Uh, if any of the faunas popped out to anyone, like any of the types or anything like that. The one with the scales on his face. Yeah, that was a pretty cool, that was a pretty unique one actually. I, don't, I didn't see one of them before. Yeah. Looks like an X-Men. I, <laughs> I saw one with the lizard tail, so when they mentioned it, when I saw it, I was like, oh, there's one with the lizard tail. <laughs> if, if it's mentioned, they've got to show it somewhere. And then... Um, all the bunny ones just reminded me of Velvet, obviously. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of bunnies. A lot of bunnies. A lot of bunnies, a lot of, looks to be cats, um, deer, dog, cow, a whole bunch of different types of faunas. So it's, it's good to see guys. that there's a, a large oh, variety. It also seemed like there may have been some human characters as well, which was nice. Um... It might have been possible that they were like tucks in, or like, you know, they just bring up the claws. They might have also been possible the as well. But but when you stop and you think of the faunus, they're a lot more tolerant than humans themselves. So in all honesty, I don't think a faunus would care if there were humans in Menagerie. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that they would have an issue if there were humans that decided to to put themselves in Menagerie, I almost feel like they would almost um, welcome that as like the humans uh, who do that would be like they want to 
be treated as equal just like the faunas do so they put themselves in the same situation as those faunas so they would otherwise respect people who would do that um, but going back to what was just mentioned about how certain faunas don't have necessarily the most obvious features um, and we'll talk about this uh, definitely in depth a little bit more um, but the biggest portrayer of that just like Tuxen is Blake's father um, who you don't really see his feature other than for a slight slight second I didn't even see one it's really, his feet honestly. I don't know if he's feet you <laughs> see it for a split <laughs> second when he gets up to check the door they have claws on them <laughs> Ah, well, that goes by theory already. <laughs> well, they're like clawed toes, but they're inside of a sock. Right. But you can you can see them through the sock. But uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more um, when we get there. But Blake and Sun are now walking through the town. They are seeing the sights of Menagerie. Sun is awestruck and blown away by everything. And he's asking Blake all these different questions. And they're talking about the situation and we get a little bit of information on the whole concept and point of Menagerie and that is that these uh, faunas have all sort of just been pushed into the corner of the world and this is basically they had to deal with what they were dealt um, and Blake has sort of grown up in this environment so she this is character development for her that she is the reason why she is the way she is because she's grown up in this scenario and had to endure this lifestyle in her early life and I'm curious what you think um, maybe that that lifestyle was like when she was younger I mean it'd probably be a little bit easier than the others because her dad being like the chief and stuff like that because they've got like the bigger house and everything, so they they got to be got got some money or something. It might be a bit easier than most other farmers. Mm -hmm. I find it interesting that in volume one, the last episode when Blake is explaining to Sun the whole White Fang ordeal, that she says a leader, and she never mentioned that it was her dad as the leader. Well, if you stop and think about it, the. The White Fang and Vale had taken a very negative, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, they, they were they were viewed very negatively because of their actions under Adam in the present. So, her dad stepping down is what caused that, at least in, in Vale. You know, it, it was her dad ran everything and then three people took over and it seemed like they branched off. So I, I wouldn't want to necessarily draw attention to that either, because mm -hmm. people might blame her. Definitely. Well, with going into the sort of big moment for the episode, we finally get to meet Mama and Papa Belladonna, who their names are still a little bit troublesome on me, because they're, they're a bit different, um, and I'm sure after a few more episodes we'll... Especially with me, I'll I'll remember them a little bit better. But at the moment, I'm having a bit of trouble remembering the Pirate names exactly. Daddy? His name's Gira. Yeah, Gira and um, is the father, and I can't quite remember the mother. Um, Quick but, to Google. But I'll we finally get to that. meet them, and Blake, at before she opens the door, is a bit sort of scared to I guess probably see the reaction of her parents because who knows how long it's been since he's seen them she says it's been a while but we don't have any exact measurement of time but with this interaction we got some very comical moments from Sun as well as some very good uh, animation expressions through Blake and her ears and all that so we get to see a lot more of that and that's always a, a very fun sight to see that RT is caring a lot more about the cat ears and how they are animated just to sh blatantly show her expressions and uh, but first things first they open the door we get to see her mom she's ecstatic to see Blake and like at this point we still didn't know 
who they were. All we knew that they were of importance because they obviously had the biggest house in Menagerie. And a few minutes later, we get to find out the truth behind everything. But like the moment when the door opens and everything else, we finally get to meet them. It was an important moment for for me as well as I'm sure a lot of other people. And that was the like Blake looks like she she is comfortable. She's not scared at that moment when when that door opens and like she hugs her mom like she finally has a smile on her face and like that that was a big moment for me and I'm, I want to get your guys's opinion on that it makes me kind of stop and wonder just how long was Blake really gone mm-hmm <laughs> I mean, she, she went off with the white flag originally, didn't she, with Adam, because we see him in Cinder's backstory thing when she meets Adam and stuff, like, at the very end of it. So she must have been gone for a little bit, because it's been about, what, it's about a year or two since Volume 1, probably, or before Volume 1. Like, possibly, I don't know. It's got to be at least that. Depending on how long she had that house, I was sort of thinking because it is the biggest house that I would have thought that originally her and Weiss might have gotten along more because they both came from families that are high in power. That That's a very good point. And then I kind of got mad that they had the biggest house because as Sun was saying, like, the island is super cramped and they could have fit so many more houses on that piece of property. <laughs> but yeah, no, but... they want an entire property for themselves. Mm. It I mean, may not have been them, that's yeah. what they wanted. Yeah, true. It, uh, I mean, a lot like, of times no, in she, cases, that. a lot of times in cases like that, it's it's a gift from the people, and because he was the chieftain, that's their sign of respect to him. Yeah, but I feel like as more people probably were born there or moved there, he probably should have been like, hmm, we need more spaces for houses. <laughs> Because, like, so many people were living, like, those tiny little beach huts. I mean, they could just move out into the desert, but it's, they said it's too dangerous or something like that. Yeah, yeah. They, they did bring up the fact that the, the reason that they don't use up the two-thirds desert is because apparently the wildlife in Menagerie is much more dangerous. And that brings up a question for me. It's like, just how dangerous is it? Like, now that they've said that, I want to see it. Um, I'm but just that's... imagine. Oh, sorry. You're fine. Um, no, I was just a bunch of King Taiji, King Taiji two and Buddy Deathstalkers sitting in there just waiting for him. Mm -hmm. I'm I am curious if it is more of a dangerous sense of of grim or is it straight up wildlife? Because they normally refer to the to the two as separate things. They don't really refer to grim as wildlife. Um. So I'm I'm curious if it if it is something other than the Grim or if it's just a sort of a sim similar term that they used for both in that sense. But going from them entering, we we get them all sitting down at a table, and the family is talking. Sons being a goofball as usual, and uh, probably one of my favorite parts is is son brings up the fact that like Blake. To him, like he, as of right now, there's nothing going on between them, but like Rooster Teeth is very, very pushing the fact that it's like they're they're trying to make them at least couple like, because uh, they've they've meeting so far so many of the tropes like oh they've got the dad mad at the boyfriend they've got the mom liking the boyfriend they've got the girlfriend embarrassed of the boyfriend and they're meet they're just checking all of these boxes off. Just one by one, even though nothing is really official yet, but it's it seems so funny to me that like they're they're joking around with that, and it's good to see that it's like they they don't have to fully commit to something for them to still make jokes about it. I like the fact that um, in, in this episode, Blake hasn't worn the bow at all and like it gives so much more expression to her character because her ears react to her mood and i just i think it's so damn adorable mm -hmm. because like nice. when when her mom's like i like him her ears just instantly like hit her head and she's like mom and you're 
just like, ah, you're cute. <laughs> It's kind of nice seeing Blake in a in a more house, you know, traditional, not traditional, but more comfortable type setting. Because always in the other episodes, she always seems so very defensive, and in this episode, she seems a little bit more open because she's finally with her family. Mm -hmm. I mean, the thing that I noticed about the house was that why don't they have any like chairs or anything? They look like they was just sitting on a mat with like a big amount as a table. Well, it, know, with that, which thing. with that, it, that may be referring back to the whole fact of like menagerie. Even with this big house, like they may not have the luxuries that you would think a royal family would have. Either that, or it's it's supposed to be a cultural thing. It could be one of those two, in my opinion. Because um, I mean, there's a lot of homes like in Japanese and Korean culture that that also do a very similar thing, where it's like the I guess kneeling position or sitting position is more formal than just sitting in chairs regularly. And you see a lot of that. So it, it may be a cultural factor. It may be a, I guess, I don't know what the right word for it is, but a, I guess, poverty factor. Because um, they, they bring up all the time that it's like menagerie is not a great place, but it's what they they have. And they make the best of it. But going from the the dinner scene, we are immediately transferred into the, I guess, the big plot point of the episode, which is apparently uh, the White Fang is in Menagerie, and this surprised Blake and Son to the point where it's like they were furious. Like, they, they immediately jumped up. At, as soon as they heard the name White Fang, they lost it. And up until this point, I am curious if anyone had any thoughts of of how we would see the White Fang introduced with Menagerie, because we all sort of expected it to happen somehow, but were you expecting it in this way? I mean, I was expecting her to get back to Menagerie and then um, everything would be like a little bit broken or stuff, like they've attacked or something before mm -hmm. because of like... The old chief and stuff like that maybe not agreeing with what adam was doing okay that's fine I, I expected them to see them in force because there's such a large concentration of faunus in that area and they kind of with those living situations i kind of thought originally that they might have been more resentful but it really now that i saw this episode it really looked like they were all really um comfortable with it and it was kind of a nicer thing to see mm -hmm. um i expected there to be like white fang like walking around like guards like the guards did in veil vale. like by twos keeping everyone in order like i expected it to be like basically run by the white fang okay they they get introduced we have the two faunas who again names are going to be tough with me because they've they're they're not normal names that you would think of so it's gonna take me a little bit but we have the finally we get to see the two faunas that we got to see in the intro the wolf and fox faunas and they are representing the the white fang for menagerie and we get a little bit of information that blake's father who is a very intimidating looking person and apparently is a very important person also used to be the head of the white fang and this was at a time before the White Fang is the more aggressive White Fang that we now know. Um, that is now led by Khan. And we we get a little insight to how the White Fang is in Menagerie currently. And there's a little bit of, I guess, beh peeking behind the curtain to the White Fang's true intentions... Um, and how they are basically playing Blake and the rest of it, her family into thinking what they are letting them hear what they want to hear and that's not the truth um, they are in fact working for for Adam and odds are we're going to be seeing a lot more of them but with this information I'm curious what you all had originally thought 
before the the truth was revealed about the two faunas, like, did you really think they were being serious, or did you were you saying BS the whole time? You yeah, BS. <laughs> I, the entire time. They just I look was like, like nah, man. I, you're, I've seen the opening. You're no good. <laughs> I just think that uh, no innocent people can finish each other's sentences with menacing voices. Like, if there's two people and they're like saying this whole speech, like one sentence at a time, each switching off sentences, mm -mm, don't trust them. Mm -hmm. But they were way me and my twin brother are like that. Well, I hate to break it to you, but um. <laughs> Apparently you're up to no good. We're like, yes, you're great. I, I am up yes, to no good. You're great. Do you solemnly swear that you're up to no good? You know it. Oh god, no. <laughs> oh hell yeah. Oh hell yeah. All right. Well, hopefully I'll I'll be getting better with names so that I can properly uh, talk about them. But that's probably not going to happen for another week or two until I rewatch the episode a good dozen times. Um. But we are, we go into, like, Blake's father is talking to them, she's explaining the the whole, everything that's happened at, at Beacon, and how the White Fang, and the reason she's no longer involved with them, and they, they keep blowing it off as like, oh no, that was not us, that's, that's those guys over there, we don't like those guys, that's we're gonna do something about those guys, and, uh, as, as soon as... The, the doors close, Blake's father basically says, yes, I will look into this, but I want to spend time with my family right now. It's like, I have a feeling um, that family is going to be like the biggest opposition to the current White Fang, because Blake's father seems like the type of person that's not going to be okay with how the White Fang is currently being ran, seeing as he was the previous leader, and it's like, We've, we've heard in World of Remnants and other snippets of dialogue that the White Fang was not always the hostile, aggressive type. They were, they always tried to do peaceful interactions. And I have a feeling like the one who was in charge during that time was Blake's father. And he's not going to be okay with like this new White Fang that's taking it in a direction that he probably never wanted. And so I can't wait to see basically family <laughs> Belladonna just mess them up. Basically. I'm, but I'm not quite sure that's going to happen though. It, it may not, but and at this point we still don't know enough, but it's like, yeah, we can we can hope. It's like, I, I want to see Papa Belladonna just, I've if he's if he's a fighter, I I want to see what a weapon like that dude could wield. Um, I I I've had conversations with both Teddy and Velvet about his weapon, and I agree with them. He either needs a big ass warhammer or or an axe. Mm -hmm. Yes. I know I know it's a bit early to be saying stuff like this, but I think something is going to happen to either Purple or Blake or Marble Blake. <laughs> Something, I, bad, something bad might happen to at least one of them. I hate to admit it, but with the whole foreshadowing of of Adam saying what he did in the end of Volume 3, I I don't want to see it happen, but I really do think you're right on that. Wait, can no. I make a prediction? Uh, sorry. You can go to quiet, I was talking. So, what... So, Adam set up the meeting with with Hazel, which is, you know, one of Salem's henchmen, to meet up with Sienna Khan, which is the current leader of the White Fang. What happens if Papa Belladonna goes to see Sienna Khan in the middle of that meeting, and now you have Hazel, Adam, Papa Belladonna, or the Belladonna family if they all go in general, and then um, Sienna Khan. Like, I'm pretty sure there would be a huge conflict that might happen on the end of the season if that does happen. That's that's very possible, and with with Blake character specifically, I I feel very similar to the way that I feel about Yang, and that she's going to need a an event or something to happen that triggers that 180 spin in her personality. She's like she's going to need a reason to really just give it her 100 percent and go after these guys. 
and I hate to say it, but a tragic event might have to be the one that does it. I think if anything is going to happen to either of them, I think something would most likely happen to her mum because that would bring her dad more like better story lived into it as well. Like mm -hmm. Blake and her, um, her dad like trying to fight the, the White Yang to get the White, the white Yang, the White Fang together. Mm -hmm. Well, that that's all we sort of have to go on with. The, the Blake storyline right now, um, as this was a shorter episode, we didn't get as much as we all probably would have hoped for, but we did get a little bit of a sort of odds are a sneak preview into what the next episode will be about, and we got that in a bit of a, I guess, mm, I don't know what to call it, just interaction. Eerie, eerie interaction, yes. Um, between the waitress that met with Chrome and you love to hate him. Tyrion. Tyrion. Oh god. That I, poor I waitress him, though. Him. I just hate him. Everyone, yeah, everyone him. hates <laughs> him but some people love the fact that they hate him and other people just hate hate him. No, I, I love Tyrion. He's got to be my favorite villain now. <laughs> I'm no, still a, I'm, I'm a Watts person. Yeah, Watts is that's great. Can, but like that poor waitress had to deal with like Raven like <laughs> swooshing out of the shop out of she's, like the restaurant. She's probably now she like, got to put up with Tyrion. Yeah. and now she's stuck with Tyrion. Like, who knows that poor what girl that does not get paid enough. <laughs> who who knows Maybe what she's, she's had to put up with? Because apparently, like she's in this village that who knows? It's probably seen their fair share of craziness, but. The, the amount of craziness in a short amount of time, it's it can take its toll on a person. So probably, She needs probably to retire. <laughs> probably, she probably, want to bet her little yeah. tray turns into a weapon. <laughs> but she's probably great. dealt with but, but, pro. Nora, you do have to remember, it's also a gun. Yeah. Totally a gun. Everything's a gun. Everything is a gun. It's gotta be a gun what somehow. Like, smaller trays. What if it's like a shield, though? That'd make more sense. Mm. It's, it's like bloody. What's she gonna do? Contact. Shield bash her way to town? <laughs> it turns into like a cannon. So Kira like did movie. that to Cinder. Shut up, you. <laughs> I'm just making jokes. Look how well that went. Pretty much. Right. But <laughs> with... Sorry, I got a little bit of you stuck in my lungs. Oh. Ooh. You're such a. <laughs> I know. But I'm the best. <laughs> But we did get to see Tyrion, and it looks like we get to see him more in his usual getup when he's not, I guess, relaxed at home base with Salem. Um, and this is, I think, the outfit that we see in the intro as well. And so, odds are, we're about to see a confrontation between Tyrion and Team Ranger, because he's getting closer. He's he's following up on them, and he's a lot closer than I would have expected him to be so soon. And so it'll either be a a matter of he will be um, confronted with near the like two thirds of the way through the season, like maybe episode seven, eight, nine, somewhere around there. And then, because I doubt like they would show him so close. And then have the conflict wait until like the very end of the season. It's like I feel like they're gonna have to have their conflict two thirds of the way through the season, and then in the season leading up to the next big guy. Or it may be like she figures out everything by the end of the season, and we we start on this whole new journey. But I'm curious to see Tyrion's role in all of this. Like, is this going to be a one and done fight, or is this going to be more of a continued? struggle between back and forth and I, I'm curious to see what Rooster Teeth does with with Tyrion he's an he's an interesting character I I do want to see more of him before I can really say that I I like him as a character or not because he's too he's evil man well he's he's too tropey evil though like he's just he's he's the crazy bad guy everyone knows the crazy bad guy they're unpredictable they most of the time, they're annoying, and they use craziness as their weapon most of the time. It's like, those 
I want to see more done with him before I can really say, like, I like this character. <coughs> Pardon me. My it's apologies. like, the ones that are unpredictable become predictable to me. It's like, the ones that are cunning and witty and things like that, those are the ones that are way too hard to predict. <clears throat> Which is why Watts is probably my current favorite. Mostly because Hazel just seems like the big, tough, silent, strong guy to me, and I guess they just had to fill all of the tropes. But with this episode, I'm going to go ahead and get everyone's final thoughts, theories, anything that you guys have come up with so far. Um, I'm not sure what next week's episode is. I've heard some people say it's a another World of Remnant, which I'm not for sure on. I really hope not. They've done enough so close together. But I've seen some people say it's a World of Remnant. Some, hopefully, it's it'll it won't be. Hopefully, they'll save that for a little bit, because I think they've said there's going to be four World of Remnants thrown in the middle of the series itself, and they've already done three of them. Two, hopefully. Or is it two? I may they've, only be two. They, they've announced the um, I think they've announced the Weiss's family stuff. In one okay. for some reason, I saw a picture about it somewhere. I don't know if it, it was legit or not. If that's the case, I really do hope in the next episode we get to see more of Team Ranger and especially Weiss because that's been a while since we've seen Weiss. Um, I want to know what's going on with her. Exactly, it's like we, even though she doesn't seem to have as much going on as everyone else, it's like she's still a very pivotal character. Gosh. And like we we need to know like what in the world is going on with her. So hopefully we get to see that. We're in the world's place. Go... <laughs> but uh, I'm going to go ahead and go through the list and get everyone's final thoughts and, and theories if they have them. And then we'll close out. And I'm going to start with Cinder on this one. Uh, well, originally I, I, I had a theory that Blake Blake's dad wasn't actually a faunus. But now you've pointed me out that foot, that thing with the feet and stuff. I, I think that's kind of not real now. But... I think um, if he is a funnest, he'd probably be some sort of like black bear or like a grizzly bear type of thing. Okay. I think that's and... the only theory I've got about it. Alright, and Scarlet? If it is a Weiss episode, I hope it takes place during the uh, charity concert they announced during the second episode, and I hope I get to see her hear, hear her sing. Okay. That, that would definitely be a, a great moment to, to be a part of. And what about you, Nora? Well, I'm glad you asked, Wilt. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> I think, for my final thoughts, that A, the waitress needs to be paid more because she puts up with way too much. B, I want to contradict, I think it was Cinder, because in the World of Remnant episode, it said that if two faunus, that were two different species of faunus, had a baby, then the baby would be like anything. But the mom faunus is a cat, so would it make sense for Blake to be a cat too? Putting that out there. And then, if like he was a bear. And then, last and final thought, Sun's abs are back, 2K16. Oh god. I still haven't oh, seen yeah. those screenshots. Well, I will. Bruh. Bruh. And before you get tons of screenshots from my now, yeah, just uh, I'm the back. Peter, I'm going to go ahead and go to you before I start getting a spam of Skype messages. It's too late for that. Um, I want to learn more about Menagerie. I know we got like a small overview, and I like what we got, but there has to be more to Menagerie than what we've seen. And my personal hopes is that it's a Yang episode because she wore the arm and now I just I want to know what happens she's my wee little dad and I need to know if she's okay but she's yeah, yeah. hang in there pair she'll be here soon it's like there's she's that dad. that that is such a the big problem with how they've they've split up the characters because it's like every single character now is so important to everything else and it's like you can only show so much in so these much. episodes without making it feel like, oh, well, we'll show each, a little snippet from each one every time, and then you don't get enough sustenance from any of them to really feel like you've gotten a, a well-connected story. 
And so it's like, it, it is stressful realizing, like, we may only get an episode with one or two characters that when we really want to know, like, what is happening with the rest of them. But that... That'll probably be a... Just fuck it up. Exactly, and that, that'll probably be a topic that gets rehashed through most of the episodes this volume. Wait, I, there was something I forgot to say. Okay. Oh, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Just, um, I think, so far in this volume, the voice acting has been on point. Like, it's been brilliant. Absolutely. Like, it matches the moods for the scenes and everything, like, perfectly. Definitely. The, the voice acting, the animation, everything has has skyrocketed this volume, and it... It really helps to, even when we get a shorter episode like we did with this one, it's like I still could not bring myself to, like, be disappointed or anything because it's like it it's such a good series and I've, I'm so involved with it as with so many other people are. And there there are a lot of people who feel like they, they were cheated out of, of what could have been and there may not be enough people who know what in the world's going on over at Rooster Teeth. They just got through with a full animation department moved to a separate building. They just got through with Thanksgiving. They're they're working their way into getting settled into their new place and all that. So it's like, I... Give them some space, guys. Exactly. We'll get there. It's, and just you just have to be well. patient. Rome yeah, an was extra not life. built in a night. And so, my, my biggest thing I want everyone who's listening to this podcast to take away is don't be so hard on, on Rooster Teeth. They are trying their best. They, they want to make the best content they can for you, as well as for the, for the rest of us, for the fans. Like, they do everything they do for, for the people who watch their content, and they care about it so much. And so, just be, be patient a little. They'll, they'll do it, and, they'll, and you'll like it. We'll get there. Exactly. But this we'll has know been... We'll what we need when we need to know. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> hey, that's my line. <laughs> well, you weren't on top of shit. Now where are you? <laughs> yeah. But anyways, guys, I think... Thank you to everyone who joined me on the podcast today. We had Admin Cinder. Let's see you guys. This is Scarlet. Fun. Leaders. Nora. Bye. And Pira. Bye, guys. And guys, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to the Ruby Nation YouTube channel. There's going to be more content being posted here regularly very soon, so keep an eye out for that. And if you like what we're doing and you haven't already, go check out the Ruby Nation Facebook page. We are a fan group of all things Ruby, so go over there, hit the like button on that. That helps us out a lot. And if you like what we're doing, make sure to leave a comment and let us know if you want to see more of something or if you have questions or anything like that. Like, just let us know. We, we love to talk to the community. But anyways, guys, this has been your host, Admin Wilt, and this is the Ruby Nation Podcast, and we'll see you next week.